What's up, y'all? We are back live on the camera on live StreamYard. Brought to you by StreamYard. It's it's Eric Esteban. I'm back with another video podcast vlog video essay, whatever you want to call this thing that we're doing. Chris is still in Hawaii. He has a scuba lesson that he is currently doing right now, so he can't join us. But I have another co-host that I am so excited to introduce because she is a personal family friend of mine. I we just figured out when we were talking in the in the pre-interview that that I'm I'm her I'm her god kuya, I guess like I don't know I don't know if I want to say that right now cuz that's weird to say god kuya. But like I'm I'm your kuya, but my she he, my parents were her 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 godparents for her wedding, and also she happens to also be the director of the Midwest chapter of Phil Ams for B- Harris. I almost said Phil Ams for Biden because we've been doing that Phil Ams for Biden all the time, but it's Phil Am Phil Ams for Harris, and she is the director of the Midwest chapter of Phil Ams for Harris. And I'm about to bring her on right now, guys, my friend. I, you know, she's just, she's my, she's my, my, my little sister, right? At this point, Abby, you say, be, oh, welcome to miscellaneous and proud, Abby. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so tell excited. Them, tell them how you, I, I want to let them know a little bit about yourself. So tell them how you got to be the director of Phil Ams for Harris, because you were you were the mid Midwest director of Phil Ams for Biden as well, right? And then, uh, so- kind of like cool. yeah, deputy and like sec- we basically you know got a core group of Phil Ams here in the Midwest and made sure to have this kind of coalition ready to win, and we've kept in touch and we're ready to go again for twenty twenty four. And so, um, yeah, as you said, it's Filipino Americans for Harris now. And so we're very, very appreciative to President Joe Biden for his leadership and his selfless work um, for decades to uplift. This is uh, George Washington type stuff. Yes. I mean, away from power and at a, a point where, I mean, George Washington was never even close to being as powerful as Joe Biden is. And he yeah. stepped away. I mean, that's different that's a different type of greatness it is very very selfless and obviously did it for the the future of our country and as you said it's not about the title and it's making sure that the progress continues and that every american feels included in this country feels that they have equal opportunity to do uh pursue their dreams and so it's uh exciting to to be able to kind of see now the progression in the campaign and now we're going to be Um, supporting Kamala Harris as she wins uh, the presidency as the first Asian American woman and first black woman in um, that role. I am just happy to see it. I'm really, my kids, my, my two daughters are, are, it was funny because in 2016, they were, they were young. They were really Mm -hmm. young. So they almost, you know, the unfortunate, what happened with Hillary, you know, they, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have seen, they wouldn't have remembered it. They still don't. They they kind of remember it. They don't. They don't really remember. They probably don't remember it because I'm angry about it still. <laughs> <laughs> but but um. But this one, you know, they're gonna. I mean, Kamala looks like them. They have the same skin. You know, they, they have the same skin tone. They have the same. They have the same eye shape. They, they you know, they they're they're, a, Asian mixed heritage women they're you know they're miscellaneous brown women you know that it's a trip that like my 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 first special was called miscellaneous brown because we're gonna have our first miscellaneous brown president which is mm-hmm. i mean obama was miscellaneous brown too but you know it's it, it it's that whole thing about you know it, it, it's just really interesting and very very uh hopeful for 
me as a father of two daughters that it has turned out this way because you know you, you see these th these things and uh and they're going to remember this when they when 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 she wins because i'm looking at it like this now then they are in disarray abby they are in disarray i'm not trying to be overconfident i want to run through the tape i want to that's part of why I'm trying to have weekly episodes every day, you know, every week of Miss Lane and Brown. Like Chris was saying that somebody hit him in the DM. She's like, I thought Eric was going to upload on Friday. And, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm sorry. I better, I better, you know, I got to upload. I'm going to start uploading and I want to be up continuously uploading every Monday. Like mm -hmm. last Monday, since Chris was in Hawaii, we, I, it was weird because the news of Biden dropping out, I was happy about it and exhilarated and the whole thing. I was excited about all the, I was climbing up the coconut tree, just like everybody else I was excited. But yep. when, I, when I sat down to podcast about it, I was sad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was so, I was humbled by this man's sacrifice for this country, but also like, like I said, when we were talking about it, like you don't normally step away from like, you always have to acknowledge that there's something bigger than you. Yep. You know, as a, as a, as a human being, not even just as a, a leader, as anything. And, and that, I think that was such a wonderful example of that, of showing that, you know, we're always, we're all part of a bigger thing that hopefully we can move forward as a human race and as a, as a collective and, and, and be better. And mm -hmm. but it was just, it was just really wonderful to see. And I hope that when I'm that age, if I do reach that age, I can be as graceful and as, as, as uh, strong as Biden showed. Yeah, no, I, I had a similar reaction and it was, yeah, that Sunday afternoon, like, phone starting to blow up. I'm like, oh my God, what is going on? And, you know, saw the news alert. And I also felt immediately sad because it, you just know it was kind of like end of an era and um, changing of now kind of the trajectory of the campaign. But but once then you kind of thought about um, seeing Kamala as the, you know, our next president, it it was such a turning point that uh, finally now is where I think a lot of people are obviously, yes, energized, but two, you know, recognizing that this this can happen this and this is going to happen. And, mm -hmm. for, and for $200 million in a week, it's going to happen. One, I mean, such a historic achievement and mobilization of the party and, you know, and then you don't obviously have to be a Democrat, but just people who believe in change that will happen to positive change um, under the leadership of Kamala as president. And also, uh, again, women are now seen and heard and prior to, um, you know, Trump being president, we had obviously President Barack Obama. And so for even that generation of kids, like that was the only president they knew, like a black That's president. They, like, they got used to that. They were yeah, like, oh my God, this, this is how the president is supposed to be. He's not supposed to be this really cool dude that's like all hip and funny and, and charming and all this. Oh, he's, the, no, we've usually had dudes like Trump <laughs> more than we've had dudes like Obama. I mean, Clinton was close because he played saxophone on our series. <laughs> yes, yes. He was smooth with that jazz music. But, you know, like for that generation of kids, like that was the first president that they had seen in office. And, you know, it is... That's a high bar. It is a high bar. It is a high bar. But it's, it's just really... Um, you know, such a historic moment where all of us are really excited to be able to be part of it in uh, a way now that we didn't, maybe necessarily, a lot of people didn't necessarily feel like um, they were going to be part of such of an impact. And I think that with the the, the record that, and the, the work and years of experience that, you know, our vice president has shown and done to fight for immigrant rights, fight for middle-class families, fight for equity, justice, um, obviously gender equality too. I think that it's, it's obviously again, apples and oranges. And are we going to be committed to electing someone who's going to con continue that progress 
and make sure that every American has um, the equity and the opportunities that they deserve? Or are we just going to obviously, again, roll back to policies that are conservative, as they're called, and roll back the progress and all the achievements that this administration has, you know, made uh, this past uh, term. So we had a, a phrase for that, right? What is it? What did she say? We're not going back. We're not going back ever. I love that phrase. I love it. We're not going back. Why would we go backward? We got to move forward. We're in the, we're in the 21st, what, 20, so what, what is it? The 21st century? 20? I don't even know what that. Yeah. <laughs> we're in 2024. Uh, we, you know, we're more than halfway. Yeah. Yeah. So like, but, but, but 24, we're 2024. Why, why, why would we want to, you know, we got AI, we have all these issues that, you know, and now he's the old guy. I mean, you know? how quick of a role reversal is that? The comparison. Oh, of it's a, now, it's a, you can't uh, use that platform. Now I'm running against, uh, you know, an older person who they argue is, um, you know, not, all there um and, and so it's it's talks crazy. about him elector and uh electrified sharks and, and all the, uh, i mean and how how windmills will give you cancer i mean and that was like back in the day he was saying stupid stuff like that so i i i've never you know I, i've never been able to logically figure out how people can one plus one equals that answer for people in their brain. I can I can never figure that out. And, and what's scarier is that they're really now focusing on voter intimidation and really making up rules about voting that, you know, well, once you vote for me, then, you know, you can't, you don't need to vote again. Or um, just making up things that like, people will listen to and people are going to listen to. And that's, and that's what we have. And that's why this election again is, we always say this, but it's very true. It's like the most important one yet. And well, so guess our- what? I think Abby, you know, people say that every time it's an election because every election, it is the mm-hmm. most important election because it is the issues of that particular time coming to a head and, you know, which, which direction are we going to go? Right. It's always, elections are always the most important time, especially in a democracy. You know, when you want to have a democracy, you, you want to vote. And that to me is the only thing that where Trump could have won in this election is if people, the apathy of not wanting to participate. And I feel like now you got $200 million raised in a week. You have all the memes and all the songs and all the coconut tree songs and all the different ways they've spliced the right wing attacks. They use these 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 quotes, you know, where she was swearing about kick the fucking door down and then said mm-hmm. excuse my life. But but and and then also her laughing. I mean, they don't. They're grasping. And then of course, I think I think four different comedians talked about how they're grasping at straws because they're talking about how she's. She's going for their everybody's plastic straws because you know that's that's what's important in this election. This and, and yeah, I mean it's like let's please focus on the issues. Let's please focus on how you're going to help every American and not just a certain demographic, not just a certain part of the country, but how are you going to help every American? And that's where the rhetoric gets nasty, the like, yeah, all these like slurs, these, you know, sexist remarks, racist remarks. Well, didn't Mike Johnson have to put out a statement to say, hey, guys, let's not uh, do these misogynistic and racist remarks. Let's let's keep it to the issues. Like if you have to have a, like a HR statement for that for your party, you're probably uh, not not doing too well for as a party. It, yeah. it, and also when Hulk Hogan uh rips off his shirt in during your convention also <laughs> not a good look i, I wouldn't think it's just <laughs> but, i mean we got beyonce singing freedom and kendrick rapping on that same track and they got kid rock and with everybody looking in the audience like uh, i mean it's even the packages aren't the same 
It, exactly. I mean, it is literally like apples and oranges, night and day. There, there's, there's no uh, at all. Well, that's what you think of uh, Mr. Mr. Vance, Mr. JD Appalachia, uh, posturepedic, couch loving Vance. Right. <laughs> Childless cat lady hater. Um, so oh my God, you know, you, I mean, this is worse than Palin. I mean, this and the the statement recently made of you know, I love my wife. Sorry, she's not white. Um, oh, that, that I, I mean, how do you explain that? How do you? I mean, this is the how you view your wife that uh, you you're focusing on her race and you're apologizing. She's a good mother, though. She's a good mother. <laughs> oh my god! I'll give her that. You know, um, but you know, I know she's not white, but but what you yeah. you lost me at the butt, homie. <laughs> and you probably lost your wife at the butt, homie. I I, I mean, how how does anyone ever think that's Okay, and uh, how does everyone, you know, condone that kind of like talk about your wife, your beloved wife? I mean, this but is where get back to Dark Brandon. I'm going to say it like this: I am. It was such a brilliant move to give Trump that confident whatever he had during that RNC, so that he could pick this fool of, of a vice president, you know, that talks about childless cat ladies and all the other things. And and now and then says, oh, you know what? Uh, I know you guys thought that you were going to win and you were going to landslide this old man. But guess what? I'm going to step aside and now you're facing the black lady. Yeah. Well, and, and again. And then his dark Brandon eyes just started glowing red again. I was like, and then laughed and diabolically. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and that's the thing where, you know, we're going to focus on issues. Like, what does that have to do with her experience and her ability to lead? Just be, That's and, and she, she's not childless. She has a stepchildren exactly. who's not, who's has dealt with her wife, who she has also raised. And, and then, I, I, it, this is Trump also said that she doesn't like Jewish people, but her husband is Jewish. Exactly. I mean it. The, like there's the, only a patch. It's only name calling. It, it, exactly, and 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 you know, it's going to get really hot and heated, and it already obviously has. And it's just, you know, it's like brace yourself. But then that's where we have to really again pivot the conversation, pivot but you the know, direction. I really love their current pivot, and I also want to talk about. I'm going to ask you about Biden and what he did today. If you if you know like the with the Supreme Court stuff where he, where he, he talked about the Supreme Court reforms, but before that I want to talk about um, the, the 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 idea of first you've been a Democrat for a long time like you you were the deputy director for Biden Phil Adams for uh, Biden and and also you've been a Democrat for a long time before that because we're from Chicago that's how Filipinos roll in Chicago that's that's us that's how we do and and you're also like. Uh, like my mom talks about, you should be more like Abby. She's so good. <laughs> no, but, no, but no, no, no. But have you as a Democrat ever seen us coalesce and just almost like fall in line in perfect timing? Like I, there had to be behind the scenes calls with everybody to make sure everybody coordinated between mm -hmm. like, and then having him say, well, they don't even know Obama doesn't even know. And then Obama <laughs> endorses her the next day after they use the excuse to, to, to step out of the debate. I mean, it's like, it was brilliant. Yeah. I've never, I, I, you know, I'm a Cubs fan. I'm normally, I watch, yes. I watch the Democrats, like I watch the Cubs, you know, sometimes, you know, the Cubs don't play right. And the mm -hmm. Democrats don't normally, they don't normally, form like Voltron like this so quickly and so brilliantly, you know? What what did you think when you saw that happening? Like almost like you were following a thing on Twitter or threads or whatever your, whatever app you're on, but you're seeing it all unfold before your eyes. What did you think of that? Yeah, it was a, such an unprecedented moment where it never happened before. And it's really... A true testament, though, to then we we did as a party, you know, unite. And it's um, 
something where people can say that sometimes our, yes, our party, I mean, all parties will have, you know, their divisions, their disagreements, their factions, but at the end of the day, you know, it really was a no brainer because the vice president has time and time again, have, has always lifted up the Asian American community has always been there for every issue um, around anti-Asian hate. Um, she and President Biden went to Atlanta right after the tragic Atlanta spa shootings. She was there in Monterey um, during that tragic shooting. She has been where we need her at, at the time we need her at all times. And again, has always made sure that she is bringing everyone with her and lifting them up at the same time, finding opportunities to make sure that she doesn't leave anyone behind with, with every issue, the youth, seniors, the middle class, our, our immigrant community. And people see that. And even just recently um, with APIA votes, presidential town hall, which happened on the day that um, was their assassination attempt of um, President Trump. Uh, oh, there's a Wolverine-like heel on the ear, by the way. I'm just going to say, I just saw Deadpool and Wolverine, and both of those guys have healing abilities. Trump got some kind of healing ability on that is his ear, because I've seen the current pictures of his ear that was shot by an AR-15 rifle, apparently, grazed, with right. the blood streaming down his face and the whole thing, and now it is healed. He got some Wolverine-type Healing power. It's all I'm, I'm not going to say anything else than that because I got Wolverine and Deadpool on the brain because I just watched that movie. I watched the movie. It was so good. I felt like I was 13 years old again. I came home and I was looking through all my comics and showing my kids my comics. I was so, oh, I loved it so much. I'm going to go watch it again tomorrow, I think. It's very, yeah, but anyway, yeah. very I digress. Tiny. I'm sorry. Now, as soon as I, th I said, as soon as I figured about trying to figure about Trump's ear healing powers, I started thinking about Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> no. I, I, I mean, we're all happy that obviously wasn't more hurt, but I, I, but he was in Pennsylvania, the same state that API vote was holding their presidential town hall. He did not send a representative. He didn't send a statement, but president, vice president Kamala Harris showed up and was there to make sure that she was going to explain how she was going to serve and continue lifting up the Asian American community. So it's always, you know, very obvious then who is going to be our champion, who is always going to be there tirelessly to make sure that we are seen and we're heard in all our needs and with every issue that's impacting us. So it's that that moment where, um, yeah, President Biden selflessly stepped down, uh, announced he wasn't running again. Uh, I think that it was definitely a moment for our party to to think about the potential and the possibilities and at, at the end of the day again no brainer it was you know vice president kamala harris that we were very excited to support and endorse so we're very much looking forward to here particularly in the midwest to um fight for her campaign and make sure that we deliver here in the central part of the country and which really is the focus and center of the political universe right now. Um, you know, there's there's a reason why the RNC was in Milwaukee. There's a reason why the DNC is going to be here in Chicago. There's a reason why we've got a couple of swing states and states that we got to focus on, Wisconsin and Michigan. Um, we really need to make sure that our uh, voters turn out and do not feel intimidated to do so. This is People fought for our right to vote. And mm -hmm. it's definitely um, important to make sure that your voice is heard. And whether you do it like early vote, in person, um, make sure that you cast your ballot because uh, it make is- Make sure you're registered to vote. Check your registration. You know, go- Number one, yes. The make sure you are registered to vote. And it is- very easy and it doesn't take a lot of time. And once you are registered, you can not just vote for this election, you know, vote for all elections that make impact on your daily life. And we want to make sure that not just obviously our community comes out to vote, but 
that all API individuals are there to make sure that our API voice is loud and strong and that we're stronger in numbers, bigger, larger numbers, and we're the fastest growing minority in this country too. So Filipinos are the second largest API group in the country too. And so like Filipinos just alone by ourselves could change the results of the election because what was the election decided by last time? Like 40,000 40, votes, you know, and, and, and in some key states where, you know, people don't realize there might be a, a, a strong contingent of, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 Filipinos that are going out to vote. You know, you never know. You just never, you never yeah. know. You never Every know. vote counts. And we saw that in Georgia. We saw that we're going to see that again in Nevada. We are, the, the swing states are going to be crucial. And that's where, of course, both parties are going to be focusing a lot of their efforts. But um, you know, particularly here in the Midwest, we have a lot of potential to make sure that we keep the blue wall blue and that we have Wisconsin and M Michigan, um, you know, coming out for Kamala. And so together we can do it. Well, listen, here's what I'm going to say. So we got about a month before the DNC in my hometown. Very, very little time. Yes. But at the same time, all I need to do is get there. You're coming. You are coming. This is well, your we're gonna home. Figure, we're we're going to figure this out because I want to go and then I can crash at different people's places at different nights. It don't matter. I I, oh, no. I can be a hobo for it's it, It's fine. And also, I think Chris is going with Phil Lamb for Harris, mm -hmm. um, for California. He's going. So if nothing else, I'll sleep on his hotel floor. I don't care. So either way, I'm I'm gonna figure out a way to go, but I want to do some, you know, because it's my hometown, and we can do some crazy stuff. We can we can do some karaoke comedy fundraisers for the DNC, yes. all these other other things. I would love to do that, and I I'm hoping that we can do that. And that those things are so fast to put together that you know, and especially during that event where everybody's going to be there anyway, looking for other stuff to do if they can't get in on the convention floor. You know, it's going to be a fun time, and and I think it's going to be a great time, and I think it's going to be a memorable time. Like I, I I remember being so jealous of being in Los Angeles during the Grant Park celebration in '08. You know, I, like, that's my home city. I should be there. And then, you know, then <clears throat> no, but then I, you know, like I, I mean, I made the joke in my special because Abby, shout out to Abby again. She was at the Friday night uh, taping of my second special. Yes, yeah, it was awesome. And, and, and I mean, you're always so supportive of me. I mean, you are like a family member. You, you're at every show when I come home to Chicago and you're always so supportive. And I really, I love you for that. That's that, that, that's one thing I'm always going to, I'm, I'm so thankful to have you in my life, Abby. You're really, you're really a great person. And you're no. so, again, so supportive to, to everything that I do. And again, just to be here on, on, on my podcast and just, talk about your stuff because you're, you're the, you're important. You're the Midwest director of Phil Ams for Phil Ams for Harris. I'm just, I'm just a crazy comedian who grows his own weed. Come on. Let's just Don't be, be real. Silly. Don't be silly. No, no but I, I have to say like, I'm, I'm really excited about the next hundred days because we got a yes. hundred days left and I'm so happy to be able to talk with you about this, but I want to take some uh, time to prognosticate. Yes. I want to. I want to. I want to think about uh, wh who are your picks. Name your name your top two picks for uh, VP for for uh, Miss Kamala Harris. That's. that's uh, I'm sorry, Vice hard. President Harris. I'm yes. sorry. I don't want to disrespect. Yes. No. That's a hard question. Uh, well, you know, I. I mean, there've been a short list of names that have been floating around. Um, yeah, but who are your who's who's Abby's short list? I want to. I want to hear your opinion on your. Who do you think if you if 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 if, she, if if vice president called you you know said Abby listen you're the you're the Midwest director of my Filipino American campaign and I really would like your perspective on who I should pick for vice president give me your top two people please I just want your perspective on it yeah <laughs> it's so hard because I mean the ones that yes have been you know kind of tossed out there are are really great great candidates um i'm mean, biased because obviously a couple of midwest folks have been on that list um including governor pritzker here in illinois governor of minnesota um 
So obviously I'm a little biased towards them, but other names too are just as great. Uh, Pritzker's a billionaire. I didn't realize Pritzker's a billionaire too. He's like a benevolent, bele- I can't even say that word, benevolent billionaire. He's a benevolent, benevolent billionaire. He's like, he, he, he looks out for the community, but he's still balling like that. He's rich. That's amazing. He's a good dude. I love him. He's I want to move back to Illinois. Well, well, yeah, you you need to come home more often. Okay. Um, so, but, there's one your one of your one of your picks. Well, you, you, don't, know, want to, you don't want to lose him. I mean, he's a he's a great he, governor. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, I I know people are talking about Secretary of Department of Treasury or Transportation. You know, right? Our Indiana guy, um, Secretary Buttigieg, and but uh, you know, I. I think that as far as like my my top two picks, I think that and where kind of things maybe look like they're heading, um, you know, Governor Shapiro or um, Governor of Kentucky, because we want to make sure. sure that, um, yeah. And plus, you know, for for we need to have, of course, a good showing of Southern support. Uh, which we have, so uh, want to make sure that they're also lifted up here. And I think that they would be great candidates to serve as vice president, um, you know, for governor of Pennsylvania, a uh, very crucial swing state. Um, he has already shown uh, great leadership um, during his time as governor with uh, a lot of the being like, you know, kind of like a purple state, um, mm-hmm. of course, you got to work with both sides. And, and and he's been able to do that effectively. And um, it, it's, it's you're going to need that, obviously, in the White House. So um, I am. Both but also of them are ready to be president. I think both of them, I wouldn't be, you know, like, because that, that to me is like the, the qualification that you need to have as a vice president, if you're going to be the vice presidential pick is, People have to be like, oh, well, if something happens to the president, can you handle the job? That, right. and, and obviously, J.D. Vance is failing that test in the in, in the weeks prior, to, uh, you know, after the convention for them. But that's the test, right? You know, because right. and especially now with Trump, you know, he's going to be what, 77 years old, be 81 at the end of his term. If he if he decides to end the term, because he just said that, you know, you know, you won't even have to vote anymore if after. After the four years, you won't even have to vote anymore because, yeah. you know, he does a anyway, I don't even. Um, but uh, so those are your two Shapiro and Bashir. That's what that's that's where I'm I'm leaning. Um, okay. it, it's, it's hard because, again, they're all like you said, the red. No, I mean, that's the wonderful thing about it is that we have such a wonderful roster of yeah. people to pick. I, I do. Feel, I do agree. And what um, are your thoughts? Mine. I I I want to just go for the. I want to go at the anti Project Twenty Twenty Five ticket and go Kamala and Buttigieg. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. Straight up, like give them exactly what they don't want. In as far as the, uh, the, no, right. no, for real, like you know, cram it down their throats. Being yeah. real, because right. show them that America does not want any of what they're trying to sell at Project Twenty Twenty Five. That's kind of yeah. where I'm at with it as far as if, if, if Buttigieg is your guy, and especially because he's such a brilliant, brilliant. Like, I watch his interviews to understand and my debate tactics in my head because mm-hmm. the way that he words things, and he's such a brilliant communicator. Even the same way Newsom is, but I don't – I wouldn't – I'm not just mentioning Newsom because he's a great communicator. That's all I'm going to say about Newsom. He's not my second pick. But Buttigieg is my number one. Number okay? one. Okay. Number one. Um, I also like, uh, Shapiro and, and Bashir. They're very good. Um, I, I almost don't want them to lose their spots in the governorship because governorships are very important to, you know, all oh, levels yeah. of government, very. you know, up and down all the way through. I want y'all to vote for Democrats all the way down to your school board. Like everybody make sure, mm-hmm. you know, like all the way through, cause you know, the school board's banning a book. So you want to go like, oh, that's yeah. been a a, a push on our on our miscellaneous and brown to, to stress local elections like we've been having these city council members and and different um people who are running for office here on the west coast 
and especially like Isabel Gerardo and and uh, Jessica Coloza and and uh, Robert Bulatow and all these people who are the Filipinos who are running, but mm-hmm. they're running, they're not running for president. They're running for local office, and those are the things that are gonna really affect you as a person, like mm-hmm. like actually like day to day things that you like. Oh man, why is this street all messed up? The city council handles that stuff. Like the mayor handles that stuff. You, you you're not gonna call the president for uh, you know a pothole on your street. You're gonna call the city council, uh, and and that's. You know, to have these people now that I'm, I'm, I'm learning from. You know, I'm learning about the, the my own local Rips. laws and mm-hmm. different things. You know, because and it's just an interesting time to be a part of this because it's such a new, especially now with Kamala at the top of the ticket. We've got this this young new generation, Gen Z, Gen X you know, politicians, some of who have been in the game, some who are new to the game, but are inspired to be a part of, you know, something. And it's, it's really heartening to see because, you know, I'm old. I, I'm turning 50 this year. I got my yeah, this is your milestone birthday. All right. This yeah, is- no, I, I, I'm, I'm excited because, you know, so all the stuff that's happening in the comedy stuff is great. Um, so, you know, I mean, Go ahead. It's, it's very true because this is where, for this ticket, for this generation, this is what the next generation of leadership is going to look like. This yeah. is what uh, we we need to make sure that we are seen, represented in our leadership, and that we know that this this team, whoever she picks, we know that they are going to deliver on the next generation of policies that are going to be serving every every person, every town, every community. And I think that that has been obviously what uh, a main driving factor now for the energy, because we want to make sure that we're all inclusive, but also that we are incorporating progressive policies that are going to um get us to where we should be, <laughs> you know, like you said, like if, I mean, if even, had- as a, even just specifically as a Filipino American community, I think that, you know, like, and, and that kind of leads me to what I want to talk about. Cause we are a day ahead of the big Phil, Phil Ams for Harris. Yes. event. Yes. Everybody's going to meet online on a zoom tomorrow. Yes. So we're going to provide links for anybody who wants to register for that event. I'm going to went with this video. I'm going to put links in the description for that event if you want to participate and and i'm going to put but uh, if you could email that uh, that to me just so i have the perfect link so that i'll send that put it all in the description and upload this video this will be up tonight on monday night um because i try to stay every monday because you know even if it's happening (laughs) it's a lot of things are happening like trying to keep up with everything with the campaign current events um, you know, the past couple of weeks have been a bit of, but it's fun. Uh, it's busy. really fun. And I, and, and it's, it's great to get your perspective on things because you're, you've got a little bit more inside baseball knowledge of it. You know, like if I, if I talk with a comedian about politics, sometimes it's a different conversation than, than when I'm talking to the Midwest director of Phil Ams for Harris, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's, it's been, it's been awesome to talk to you, but it's also cool to talk to you a little sis. In yes, Chicago. everyone, Eric is the best Kuya because he not only supports his family, his friends, but he supports the comedians that need exposure and need to be lifted up. And he never goes anywhere without including them. So you are definitely our true leader in, in your space and comedy and, and, and acting. And so we are so proud of your success and all of your accomplishments. And that's why it's so important that we support you and all the great work that you're doing on, you know, really doing the real talk right now, you know, really talking about why it's important to vote, why it's important for the Filipino American community to be engaged civically um, and also understand how certain policies are really going to affect your daily life and that we should have every equal opportunity as every other community. And, so 
and doing that through art and through comedy is like a whole other awesome way to do that. So we always claim you as our hometown guy. So any opportunity that you get to come here, we're always like, you need to come I, back home. I really do. I would love to be able to, if it all lines up, I'm going to talk to four by three and see if un, unemployable yes. is almost ready. And, you know, I, I like to have multiple reasons. And obviously the DNC and the first AAPI African-American black president, woman president, all of it, you know, the whole historic thing. And it's in my hometown again. And it's almost like we get a redo on the uh, mishap of uh, 72 and the craziness of that uh, convention and how oh, yeah. an open convention, because that's what I was talking about. I was, when, when, when we first, when every, everybody was after the debate, the post debate was like, oh my God, Biden this and all that. And I was like, guys, we got to chill out because the only way that this is happening is if Biden decides what he wants to decide. But I'm not even trying to think about that. I'm going to go vote for Biden, whatever. But an open convention is not good. And it's in Chicago. I don't want to repeat history. <laughs> but yeah. I think now this convention is going to be a very different. Once in a lifetime, kind of, yeah. It's gonna be a, it's it's gonna be a different thing because Grant Park and Obama was very special, and yes, for me, almost specifically, was even that much more special because it was Grant Park in Chicago. Mm -hmm. But this, yes, it's in Chicago, and that means a lot to me specifically. But this, this means a lot for the whole the the culture mm -hmm. because. America drives pop culture in a lot of ways globally, you know, whether it's hip hop, whether it's movies, whether it's all these things and politics in a lot of ways. Like look at what happened in France and in England, they had a, a leftist movement because of all these things that were happening. So I think we're just falling in line with what's the global, hopefully progressive and kind of, and, 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 and I hopefully ultimately more empathetic form of government that that yeah. looks looks towards all the people and not doesn't worry about you know income levels or melanin levels or any any other levels of things that none of us can determine or some of us can determine and some of us are just greedy because look yeah. i'll say this i'm gonna put it right here like this if any of you rich filipinos in chicago are listening to this and like my podcast and want to you know buy me a plane ticket to Chicago for the DNC. I'm telling you right now, I will do it in your business. We will podcast in your business and we will, we will, we will. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, we could, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at one of you, you know, Filipino restaurants. I could be like in your restaurants posted up in the DNC and we could watch it on yeah. your on watch TV, party, right? you know, watch parties and then karaoke afterwards and all. Yes. Oh my God. It would be so much fun. And it's, then, yeah. Food would show and, up and Joe would show up and, and we, we'd sing karaoke with Joe Biden. And I'd sing Islands in the Stream. I already have the song picked out to sing with Joe Biden. I'll sing the Dolly Parton part and he could sing the Kenny Rogers part. And we could we would have such a fun time and that shit would go viral. And there you go. I mean, you know, and then the karaoke comedy politics show would be born and we could we'd sell it to Comedy Central and then there you go. We'd be all set. Yeah, it's a one way. <laughs> <laughs> Supporting a, a Filipino-owned business, getting people civically engaged, getting people excited about this historic election, and getting out to vote. So you are that's, that's, that's achieving it. a lot in one gathering. And and yeah, and like I said, the Midwest is really the center and focus of this political universe we're in right now. And yeah. what better place to be in in being part of this? And And at the end of the day, I mean... The historic number of the the amount of money that was raised in one week for Vice President, you know, Harris, like, I mean, again, that's proof that we can mobilize and we can activate quickly and we can support her and make sure that she gets over this finish line and we can do it in this less than 100 days that we have left. And it's it's some may say, you know, that in politics, that's like a, a lifetime. But um you know, there's there's very short time that we can um, organize and strategize, and we're we're doing it, and we've been doing it since since she announced, and we're making sure that 
we're going to deliver um, on that on that promise. And I think that people understand, like, like the task. Like we, yeah, we less than hundred. Understand days. the assignment. That's the hashtag that was on and 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 Twitter. We're, we're ready. Put me in, yeah. coach. We're ready because it's definitely we can't do it alone. We have to, we we need to do this together, and we're going to do it in solidarity with other communities, with the Black vote, the, the Latin A vote, we're going to make sure that we are working solidarity with like the rural communities, um, you know, all different regions of this country. So this is this is a time where it, we cannot just sit on our laurels and that, you know, think that we're going to, to win with just minimal action. It We need to always run election as if it is our last, it is one that we might lose. And so that has been a mistake some people have made in the past, and we're not going to do that. And so we have a lot of momentum. Vice President Kamala Harris had a higher approval rating than Trump just, you know, a couple of days ago. Um, so we are building this momentum and we're building the support. We're building the infrastructure of this campaign together. And it is all going to coalesce here uh, at the DNC where we're going to, it's like a reunion, but it's also a celebration and it's going to be a call to action to make sure that um, we're, we are just, we're doing this together united. But before, okay. Cause we're almost running out of time. We're, 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 we're like, How are we ready to run out of time already? Speeding through, but I want to, I want you to give a plug to the event that's happening tomorrow, June 30th with Phil Adams for Harris. Talk about who's going to be there. Talk about, who's going to be listening. Talk about, it'll be the whole of Filipino progressive America together on one zoom. So I'd love for you to plug that and talk about that for just a minute. And then, and then, then we probably are going to have to sign off. Cause we, 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 we could just, we could talk forever, Abby. So, so but, no, but yeah, that's a plug to tomorrow's event for sure. Yes. No, thanks Eric. Yes. Tomorrow, July 30th, we're going to have a big community launch for Filipino Americans for Harris. So big Zoom gathering, and we're going to have uh, different Filipino elected officials from across the country, Attorney General Rob Bonta. Um, we're going to have people from all across the South, Midwest, um, and uh, also obviously uh, the West Coast, East Coast. And so we want to make sure that um, we gather everyone in a space where we're celebrating this historic moment and that we're coming together to um, take the next steps on making sure that again we we get victory in November and it's going to be a party at the end too because like we've talked about and if there's anything Filipino Americans and Filipinos in general know how to do it's climb the coconut tree coconut tree <laughs> and we can do it virtually I we feel like that. The, all them coconuts online should be a sign to you Filipinos that we need to support Kamala Harris for president because all them coconuts, that's just that's just our own homeland speaking to us. We need to be down mm -hmm. with the coconuts. We need to take the coconut peel, take, swallow the coconut peel, and do everything that you can to get Kamala Harris elected. And also, if you're listening and watching for this long, you should probably like the video. Yes. And you should subscribe to this channel. And, and and Abby, tell them where they can find you and, and how they can support you and how they can every just tell them all plug all the things that you want to plug and, and, and tell them all the things. Yeah. So we uh, so tomorrow will be at um, it's going to be uh, via Zoom. So we ask that everyone register and we'll we'll plug in the uh, the links and such. Um, and we want to make sure that when we gather together, um, we, we keep in touch because obviously this is going to be a community launch and we're going to try to make sure that everyone together is going to be working towards this victory. Um, but it'll be um, 7.30 Central Time, so 8.30 Eastern, um, 5.30 uh, Pacific PM. And what we'll do is, um, yeah, we'll put in the links and such to, to get registered for that, but also to make sure to follow us, Filipino Americans for Harris, um on social media um oh, one so word, Facebook, right? instagram uh i'll put it in the description yes, too yes. i'll put that in the description too um i don't want to miss <laughs> um say the, the exact handles here so uh follow us um get connected because also we're um 
I'm going to be looking for people to help us phone bank, help us canvas and all the different. So not just here in the Midwest, of course, all of our um, partner uh, volunteers in different parts of the country, making sure that we're activating our Philam community, um, getting people registered to vote, you know, even like coordinating um, rides to the polls, uh, making sure if you need translation, we get that for you, uh, making sure that you know where your polling place is and make sure that if you want to vote early, how you how you do that. And so we can definitely help with that. And we um, we're going to have some merch um, and we want to make sure that we are going to be um, working together and celebrating in November. And so we're also going to be um, going to have other different, you know, possible like uh, meetups, like here in the Midwest, we're going to be um, making sure that we're traveling to the, the swing states to do some door knocking, um, some phone calls. So we want to really prioritize, obviously, where um, the, the the work is needed in those uh, swing states. So, um, yeah, we'll make sure to get those links in, um, up so that everyone can get engaged and get connected. Awesome. 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 Well, you know, anything where I, if it's online where we can meet and hang out and talk, I'm down for whatever. And also, again, we're going to put it out there. This will be the... The first of many requests, and maybe not even requests. We'll see what happens. Who knows? Maybe maybe good luck will happen, and and things will go well, and I'll be at the DNC in August. You're going to be at the DNC for sure. Just put it in the universe. Put it in the universe, and it'll happen. It's going to happen. You're coming back home for this very historic convention. Right on. Hey, Abby, thank you so much for being my guest thank today you. on Miss Linus and Brown and discussing, you know, these. Uh, the, the flipped perspective, I, I came up with that uh, earlier <laughs> on on politics and pop culture because it's, it, you know, it's our Phil Am perspective on, on things, but also, you know, it's just how, how it relates to us, but also it's, it, it's just fun to, to be able to talk to you and connect with you because it's just, you're a good friend and it's, it, it it's, it's nice to be able to know that, that we have good people doing and, doing the work to get good people elected. So I'm just happy to call you my friend. You're doing the hard work, Kuya, too. So, um, and obviously, again, you're a Chicago, Chicago guy. So I feel like California stole, stole you from us. So no, obviously. I'm always, I'm always be Chicago never, no matter what. Always, always Chicago be. through and through. You can never always, take a Chicago always. out. Always, always from the shy. I, yeah. won't, I, I won't ever Kanye myself. I'll never be Kanye. <laughs> all right abby we'll talk to you soon and and you know what this will be the first of many times because i want to let's 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 do this again soon before the, you know we'll talk and we'll, we'll talk before the convention and of course. maybe we'll talk at the convention too but at the same time let's talk before the convention we'll do this again we will right on peace okay. see you guys soon like subscribe write a review talk to you yeah. soon see you next monday peace Hey. I don't think you want any problems, but you got one, well, here we go. You can see the size is colossal, look at the way she make the thing go. Make it gyrate, make it shake like tectonic press, that's what you call an earthquake, ayy. Hey. Make it gyrate, make it shake like tectonic press, that's what you call an earthquake, ayy. Hey. It's summertime, starting up a heat wave, and now all weekend, hardly slept in three days. Whoever's driving the car is a DJ, when it's Q, you're better pump that bitch. The dominance is obvious, I guillotine, heads roll Everywhere I go, I rep Philippines Found my way, turn a maze to amazing Infinite flows discovered in an ancient spaceship I see things before they happen, visionary Bury me inside a studio at the cemetery My modus operandi not monetary Noah Lazarus, the holy one at the monastery So let me see your cue, plus the why, that's the crew I'm a giant, how I group, still connected to my roots Rhymes, I kick it like Bruce, got me feeling like Zeus Standing tall like Manu, to reach this level, need a boost I don't think you want any problems, but you got one, well, here we go. You can see the size is colossal, look at the way she make the thing go. Make it gyrate, make it shake like tectonic press, that's what you call an earthquake, ayy. Hey. Make it gyrate, make it shake like tectonic press, that's what you call an earthquake, ayy. Hey. Smoother than Brazilian wax, that's interact, my life a cinematic reflection in the mirror, Max. With the pros, I'm proliferating, she said my syntax sounds so scintillating. 
Flavor Maddox on the beat, savory. Being scared, still doing it, that's bravery. Hunger turn us into savages. Ain't nobody give us nothing, had to do it alone, without a loan. Like North on Queens, Aquafina had the shell toe. Adidas used to hang with the drug dealers. Been doing this since the set taste. In my Walkman, writing rhymes on the subway. Traditions I carry on, hip hop scholar. Mastered in the street, science, raw diamonds, have a final. With the stars and the line, got the youth to the truth. On the tree of knowledge, squeeze forbidden fruit and made it juice. I don't think you want any problems, but you got one, here we go. You can see the size is colossal, look at the way she make the thing go. Make it gyrate, make it shake like tectonic press, that's what you call an earthquake, ayy. Hey. Make it gyrate, make it shake like tectonic press, that's what you call an earthquake, ayy. Hey. I just wanna dance all night, wanna dance all night, wanna dance all night with you. I just wanna dance all night, wanna dance all night, wanna dance all night with you.